Hiya, welcome to Biomed Sessions with me, Ruth. Today we're going to be discussing the function of the nephron. Here we have our nephron, the unit of the kidney responsible mainly for the production of urine in order to get rid of excess water and toxic waste products. There are approximately 1 million nephrons in each kidney. At this end of the nephron, blood enters in via the afront arterial, passes through a network of capillaries called the glomerulus, and leaves via the efferent arterial. As this occurs, components of the blood are filtered out into an area known as the Bowman's capsule. The filtered components, collectively known as glomerular filtrate, pass on into the tubules. Eventually, filtrate enters the last part, the collecting duct, and exits as urine. In men, the kidneys typically produce about 180 litres per day of this filtrate yet only 1 to 2 litres of urine are produced each day. This means that only 1% of the filtrate manages to leave the nephrons. So what happens to the other 99%? For the most part, filtrate is reabsorbed back into the blood at several locations along the tubule. But how can reabsorption occur? Well, the efferent arterial doesn't just end there. It branches out to form capillaries which surround the tubules of the nephron. Reabsorption is the movement of substances out of the tubules, across the surrounding interstitial fluid, into the blood of the capillaries. Now whilst we're on the topic, we might as well discuss secretion, which occurs in small amounts in the nephron. This is the process whereby substances move from the blood, through the interstitial fluid, into the tubule. To make things simpler, let's remove the surrounding capillaries and zoom in on the first part of the journey where filtration occurs. I've covered this process in detail in a previous video, which I've linked for you to check out. But basically, most components of the blood, except for blood cells and the majority of proteins, are squeezed out between the pores of the glomerulus to reach the Bowman's capsule. So the glomerular filtrate contains substances such as water, glucose, amino acids, and inorganic ions such as sodium, chloride, potassium, and bicarbonate. It also contains the waste products creatinine and urea. Small amounts of these substances in the blood are okay, but they are harmful in large doses, hence the body rids itself of significant amounts via the kidneys. The next destination for the filtrate is the proximal convoluted tubule. Convoluted simply means twisted or coiled. This region is lined with simple cuboidal epithelium and substances pass from the basolateral surface to the apical surface of the cells and out into the interstitial fluid. Approximately 65% of sodium ions are reabsorbed here through various methods. Positive attracts negative, so naturally wherever sodium ions go, chloride ions follow. Other negative ions do so too. As you may know, NaCl is the formula for common table salt, so it would be pretty salty outside the tubule if it wasn't for the fact that 65% of water leaves by osmosis. In addition, 65% of potassium is reabsorbed, as well as 90% of bicarbonate ions, which are important in maintaining the pH of the blood. But glucose and amino acids are the champions here, as around 100% are reabsorbed back into the blood to be used in processes such as respiration and making proteins. Note. Not all urea leaves the nephron in the urine, as about 50% is reabsorbed. And secretion? Well, ammonia as well as various medications are secreted into the tubule. The next part of the nephron is the loop of Henle, which has a descending limb in which the filtrate travels down, and an ascending limb in which the filtrate travels up. The thin segments of the loop are lined with squamous epithelium, now the loop of Henle dips down into a region of the kidney known as the medulla. This region is highly salty. Why? Because sodium is actively pumped out of the thick ascending limb followed by chloride, but water itself cannot follow because the ascending limb is impermeable to water, hence the interstitial fluid becomes salty. The descending limb, however, is permeable to water, but has very low permeability to ions such as sodium and also urea. So as the filtrate travels down the descending limb, water leaves by osmosis because of the salty environment of the medulla. By the time the filtrate reaches the bottom of the loop, it is highly concentrated as significant amounts of water have left. 
However, the story is different in the ascending limb, whereby any water that remains cannot escape the filtrate. Sodium chloride, on the other hand, leaves passively from the thin ascending limb, then is actively pumped out of the thick ascending limb. After these processes have occurred, the filtrate is dilute. In total, approximately 25% of sodium chloride is reabsorbed from the loop of Henle. In order to avoid cell damage, the amount of water and salts in the blood needs to be kept regulated, and the nephron plays a vital role in this. The distal convoluted tubule, which is made up mostly of simple cuboidal cells, is the place where initial adjustments are made to the filtrate. Under the influence of the hormone aldosterone, sodium is reabsorbed, followed closely by chloride, whilst potassium or hydrogen ions are secreted into the tubule. Almost all remaining bicarbonate is reabsorbed, and although the distal tubule is normally impermeable to water, small amounts may be reabsorbed here too. The collecting duct, which is composed of principal and intercalated cells, is where the final adjustments take place before the filtrate leaves as urine. Here, sodium chloride is reabsorbed in addition to urea. Although sometimes urea can re-enter the tubule at the loop of Henle in a process known as urea recycling. But what about water? Levels of water in the collecting duct are regulated by the hormone ADH, which acts to retain water in the body by enabling it to be reabsorbed back into the blood. For example, if you are dehydrated, ADH allows aquaporins, aka water channels, to be inserted into the epithelium allowing water to be reabsorbed back into the blood. Remember, the medulla is salty, so if water is given the opportunity to leave, it will. On the other hand, if you are overhydrated, a lack of ADH will mean that the collecting duct is more or less impermeable to water, so excess water can pass out into the urine. In general, urine contains water, urea, sodium, chloride, potassium and creatinine, as well as other inorganic substances. Okay, hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. If so, don't forget to like, and if you want to see more videos from me, do subscribe. Okay, see you in another video. Bye!